God is very creative in giving us also opportunities like high school camps to serve food at, where we can use food there also to, um, when you serve with a warm, gentle heart, in a, and they, they know that you're filled with God's spirit. They can feel that through the way that you act and the way that you present yourself, and also the way that you present food. If you present food to somebody that's sloppy and just all over everywhere, they're gonna think you really don't care about them. But if you serve it in a nice, beautiful presentation, they think, oh, you really care about me. And that person may not have anyone all day that they feel really cares about them. So when they see something beautiful being served, they feel good about themselves, like somebody cares. And that's God. I love that. I love that because that's what we've talked about too in Breakout and FBC Kids. We've talked about loving God, but also loving others. And so Sherry gets to use her God-given talent of creating beautiful food to love others. So thank yes. you so much for sharing with us yes. today. Yes, I'm happy to. All right, my friends, take a look. You're going to watch something new called One Thing. Watch this. Everybody, did you know that it's National Watermelon Day? And also, look at how tiny this guy is. Anyways, I'm gonna create a unique work of art to celebrate by smashing this watermelon onto the floor. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Don't you dare, young man. Okay. I'll do it after I tell you this really cool story I heard about Leo, who is my cousin's aunt's dogs, hairdressers, neighbors, so I forget. Anyways, he's just a great kid. And I heard his story. Now Leo's eyesight is so bad, he's had to wear glasses as long as he can remember. And glasses make everything harder. Other kids are like, watch it, four eyes. And the beach is the worst. Unless Leo wants to see the waves in low death. Every year Leo begs, can I just get contacts? Because contacts would give him laser vision. But every time mom says, not yet, sweetie, and reminds him, God gave you beautiful eyes. The only thing worse than mom being uncool in front of Leo's friend is the uncool assignment from Leo and Josh's art teacher. They're supposed to create a picture of some place they saw this summer by drawing or painting or throwing ripe veggies at the wall. Yeah, yeah, I know. A tomato is actually a fruit. Now, some creative license, please. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mom sends Josh and Leo away to do their project. And Josh draws himself in the mountains on an alien planet. But Leo's like, I can't draw. I can't paint. Not to mention that I didn't even go anywhere this summer, but here. <gasps> Suddenly, Leo knows what he can create. And when he's finished, everyone can see with Leo's eyes. Mom and Josh think it's really cool he created something so unique. They give him a thumbs up and a standing ovation and red tomato confetti. So kids, remember that wearing glasses is a superpower and that creativity is imagining what you could do because you were made in God's image. Ooh, I just thought of something even more creative that I can do with this watermelon. I'm gonna slice it up and give everybody a piece. A teeny, teeny, tiny piece. A little bitty. All right, bye guys, I'll see you next time. Hey, look, I got watermelon this time. It's our last week of creativity, and I have a creative game for you. I really love to be creative in the kitchen, and you can see Miss Sherry behind us. She's putting frosting on those cinnamon rolls. I don't even know, is it frosting or icing? Icing, actually. Icing. I don't really know the difference, but I call it icing. Icing. See, yeah. I like to be creative, and you know, I call it what I want to because I'm not a real chef. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. The, the game we're gonna play today, I have two ingredients I need to show you. 
One of them is salt, and one of them is sugar. Now, if you take a close look at salt and sugar outside of the bag, they're really, they look a lot alike. They look very similar. It's hard to tell them apart, salt and sugar, but they taste very different, don't they? They taste very differently. So here's what I want to do. I'm gonna show you a picture of a food, and I want you to tell me if you think it has more salt in the recipe or more sugar in the recipe. Okay, are you ready to try this? Here is your first item, pixie sticks. What do you think? Do you think that has more sugar or more salt? You got it, it's sugar. Yeah, definitely sugar. Okay, here's your next one. Number two is potato chips. Hmm, I like potato chips. They're pretty salty, so I guess they have more salt. That's right, very good. Okay, item number three, here it comes. Chocolate chip cookies. Oh, those look delicious. Chocolate chip cookies. Okay, more salt or more sugar? Well, I've made chocolate chip cookies before, and you put both. You do use salt and sugar. Which one does it use more? Sugar. That's right. Okay, here we go. Number four is ice cream. You scream ice cream, we all scream for? Ice cream. Okay, does it use more sugar or more salt? It's sugar, very good. Here comes the next one, guacamole. Have you ever tried guacamole? You smash up the avocados and you chop up some tomatoes and maybe some onion and cilantro, maybe some lime juice, a jalapeno, and some salt. Yep, no sugar in that one. Okay, here we go, a soft pretzel. Ooh, kind of like the ones you get at the mall, if you've ever been to the mall. Oh, those are really good. You can actually get some that have sugar on them, but if you think about just the pretzel, does it have more salt or more sugar? It's more salt, that's right. Okay, here we go, we're moving right along to brownies. Ooh, soft, warm in the middle. Are you a crust person or do you like the middle? Yeah, I'm more of a middle person. Actually, I'm more of a raw cake batter person. Don't tell anybody I said that. You're not supposed to eat brownie batter raw. <laughs> okay, does it have more salt or more sugar? It's sugar, that's right. Next one, a cake with chocolate frosting. Whose birthday is it? Oh, it's not mine, not for a while. Does a cake with chocolate frosting use more sugar or more salt? It's more sugar, and I think I might be giving it away. All right, here we go. Next one. Steamed broccoli. Ooh, I do like steamed broccoli. I like steamed broccoli with salt and pepper on it. So which one do you think it is? It's salt. I gave it away. Okay, last one is a tricky one, I think. Here we go. It is ketchup. Ketchup. Ooh. Ketchup on your french fries, ketchup on your chicken fingers, ketchup on steak? I don't know, what do you think ketchup on? Do you think that ketchup has more salt or more sugar? It's sugar! Did you know that? Ketchup has quite a bit of sugar in it. That's pretty cool. Okay guys, let me tell you a little, about, a little bit about today's story. Remember we're talking about creativity and so Jesus found some really creative ways to teach people and we're gonna hear a story that was written down by a man named Matthew and he wrote it in the book of the Bible called Matthew yeah that makes sense let's take a look at today's real and true Bible story the Bible it's 66 books of history stories letters and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story the epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. Kisa Jones tied the strings of a large white apron carefully behind her back. 
She glanced at Odd, the gleaming silver countertops and appliances in the kitchen of a cupcakery where her brother Robert worked. This is amazing. Yeah, pretty great Maya's letting us use the mixer and stove. Pretty great, you're helping me. Keisha offered to bake cookies to raise funds for the new marching band uniforms. Even better, she convinced Robert to help her. He clipped the smudge recipe page over the counter. Brown butter and toffee chocolate chip cookies? Sounds weird. Trust me, they are the bomb. Robert worked evenings in a bakery for three years, so Keisha had to admit, he probably did know. She looked over the recipe. Two cups of flour, one teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of salt? Actually, we're quadrupling the recipe, so that's four teaspoons of salt. Robert tossed Keisha a set of measuring spoons. Cookies are supposed to be sweet. Won't the salt ruin them? Nope. Salt actually brings out the flavors. What does that even mean? You want to test it out? Fine. I'll make a batch with salt. You make one without. You're on. The siblings work quickly as Robert showed Keisha how to mix dry ingredients and wet ingredients separately. What do we do now? Add the dry ingredients into the wet mix on low speed. Slowly, or you will make a flower storm all over this kitchen. I knew that. As Keisha worked, though she began to hear another sound over the mixer. Wow, rain's really coming down. Yeah, and this is such an old building that every time it storms, the power goes out. I can't see a thing. Robert fumbled with his phone until the flashlight came on. It always comes back on pretty fast. We can wait it out. Robert settled down on the floor, back against the cabinets. Keisha sighed and sat down too. She checked her phone. My battery's dying. Entertain me. What? You can't live without your phone? I don't know. Tell me a story. I was just thinking of one about salt. Really? One that Jesus told. Ooh, that one. Sermon on the Mount. Well, it fits. You know. The cookies. Fine. Read it to me, preach a man. It's in Matthew. I know that. Robert settled in with his Bible app. Jesus saw the crowds, so he went up on a mountainside and sat down. Then he began to teach. And pretty quick he gets into this part. You are the salt of the earth. That's it? Well, no. I mean, then Jesus talks about throwing out the salt if it loses its saltiness. How do you even know if you're salty? I think it's like the cookies. Salt makes things taste better. And people who follow Jesus can make life taste better. Mmm, like chocolate chip cookies. Robert punched her lightly in the shoulder. You know what I mean. When we share God's story, we bring hope to others. We help to fill their lives with kindness and joy and peace. All that good stuff. Okay, okay, I get it. Salt, good. There's something about light too, right? Yep. Jesus says, you are the light of the world. People do not light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand. Then it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine so others can see it. Then they will see the good things you do. And they will bring glory to your Father who is in heaven. Keisha shifted, trying to get comfortable on the hard floor. So when we follow Jesus. By showing God's love to others. When we do that, others can see God better and what to do. Like a bright light. Yikes! Robert leapt up to try to stop the mixer as the power came on. Keisha stood and stretched, blinking. Like a bright light. You planned that, huh? Of course. Well played. Hey, I'm gonna put salt in my batch of cookies after all. Well played. As Keisha measured the salt, she smiled. The cookies would've came out great, but she has some thinking to do about ways she can become salt and light herself.
we can use our creativity to point others to God. We can show people what a difference he's made in our lives with the way that we live every day. So here's today's bottom line. God created you to share his story. Let's pray and ask God to help us do that. Here we go. Dear God, thank you for creating us in your image. It's so cool how you created us to be the salt and light as we share your story with others. Please help us treat people with love and kindness every day. We want our lives to show all that you've done for us. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now God's good story is for everyone. And with God's help, we can share it with others. How do we do that? Well, we tell people about God. We can share all that he's done. We can tell them how much God loves them. But we can also show them, right? That's what it means to be the salt and light. When we're kind to people, we're showing them that God is kind. When we're patient with people, we're showing them that God is patient. And when we love people, we're showing them that God loves them too, more than they can ever imagine. And so, here it is. God created you to share His story. It isn't just about the words that we say, it's about the love that we show. God made us in His image, which means we can use our creativity to share His story in all kinds of ways. Even food, right? Even food, we can share His love using creativity. All right, friends, let's practice our memory verse for this month. Do you remember where it is? It comes from Psalms 145, verse 3. Lord, you are great. You are really worthy of praise. No one can completely understand how great you are. All right, friends, keep shining as you head through this week. And let's remember how you're going to be at home. Here we go. Be respectful. Be responsible. Be safe and have fun. Bye, friends. <laughs> hmm. A six-legged chicken. It's chicken for everyone. Hmm. Sheep that can shear themselves. <laughs> A pair of glasses that'll let you see behind you. Oh, yeah. Beef jerky made out of chicken? Novels! Oh, this is the best idea yet! Ah! Oh, where do they come from? <laughs> so strange. Clothes that are made from other clothes! Pat Sajak, scented deodorant. <laughs> Welcome to the So and So Show. I'm Brandon. And I'm John, and we're wearing awesome mustaches. Yes, we are. Why? Because we're chefs, and every self respecting chef has a mustache. Gordon Ramsay doesn't have a mustache. Okay, that's one. Bobby Flay, Emeril, Martha Stewart. Subpar chefs. They're like the most famous chefs in the world. Below par. Okay, who are the, the above par chefs then with mustaches? Chef Louis. Chef Louis, the guy from The Little Mermaid? Uh -huh. That doesn't count. Oh, okay, what about uh, Chef Remy from Ratatouille? Oh, no, 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 those are whiskers, plus he's a rat and a cartoon, uh. doesn't count. Aha! What about the greatest chef in history, Chef Boyardee? He was a genius. <laughs> okay, you got me there. <laughs> We're dressed like this because we are making an old family recipe today. Snickerdoodle soup surprise? Not your family's recipe. Uh -huh. An old family recipe from someone who knows stuff. Ooh! Bonjour! Come on in, have a seat. Oh, this is cool. Tell us who you are and what you know. I 
I'm Madeleine Lemord, but I am called Maddie, and I know quite a bit. I know every runner of the Tour de France for the last two decades. I know how to put together a Bugatti racing engine. Oh. But I am also known for what I can cook. Great, you're a cook. <laughs> Quoi? No, 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 no. I am a chef. And by the way, I do not have a mustache. Oh, it, it suits you. Merci. So, uh, what, what are you going to cook for us today? Le poisson! Le poisson? <laughs> le poisson! Oh, I love le poisson. Oh, me too. <laughs> but no. We are making a 250-year-old recipe passed down in my family for generations. Ooh, sounds mysterious. What's the recipe for? French fries. You know, I heard that uh, French fries actually originated from the country of Belgium. Oh, so they're really Belgian fries. Yeah. No, they are French fries. Yeah, but if you look on the internet... They are French fries. Okay. Some people like to peel the potatoes. My family's recipe leaves the skin on. Now we cut them. All right, where do we... Voila! Start. You batter the fries. All right. Oh! This batter is what makes these french fries so special and so delicious. <laughs> this batter is made with flour ground from the wheat kernels from the finest wheat fields in France. Mm. <laughs> and then we add a precise amount of white grape juice squeezed by and directly into the bowl. Mm. And then, of course, this batter contains the Perfect blend of our secret family herbs and spices. Mm, yum! Better up! You yep. put the duck fat in the pot. All right, this is duck fat? Yes, of course. <laughs> what else would you cook in? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brandon. <laughs> Sorry. So, uh, Chef Maddie, uh, is there uh, is there like a recipe or something in a cookbook or on the internet that in case anyone wants to try this the at home? The internet? A cookbook? Quoi? No, 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 no. This is a secret family recipe. I was taught this recipe by my father, who learned it from his mother, who learned it from her great aunt, who learned it from her great grandfather, Chef Jean Baptiste Honoré Le Monde. Did he have a mustache? We do not. Tell people the secret of the recipe because then, then everyone would know it. Well, I just thought that if the recipe is, is so delicious that you would want other people to know it so they could, you know, share in the deliciousness. Huh. This is something I have not thought about. It, it has always just been a recipe passed down in my family. Oh, well, I can't wait to pass it down my throat and to my belly. So are we going to cook these Belgian fries or what? Yes, of course. You must bake them bit by bit at 375 degrees until they are golden brown. Mm -hmm. Wait, 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 wait. Aren't you, you're sticking around to watch us cook them, right? Oh, I'm afraid not. No, I... I do not think I can keep this recipe to myself any longer. Everyone should know, no? No. I mean, yes. I mean, what? Be on the lookout for Chef Maddie's cookbook where all of my secrets will be revealed. Magnifique! Oh. Bye! She didn't even say bye. Well, she's in a hurry. Do you, you want to put these in the oven? Wee <sighs> wee. Oui, oui. Oh, you speak French now. No, 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 no. I, uh, I have to tinkle. Wee oui, wee. Oui. <sighs> ah! Oh! And I had to tinkle and. Put on some skin. Ow! It's Bible story time with Kellen. Hey guys. What's that delicious smell? Oh, we're cooking up some French fries, Kellen. Yeah, they should be ready by the time the story's over. Mm. Well, let's get to it. 
The story today comes from Jesus' most famous sermon in the Bible. And since Jesus preached this sermon from the side of a mountain, today we call it the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon from the Mouths? I thought all sermons were from the mouths. No, the Sermon on the Mount. It's short for mountain. A short mountain is called the hills. Okay. So everyone, this is my friend Horvath. Um, I'm guessing he's here to help me tell today's story. Thank you for having me on your shows, Kellens. I am Horvath, and I am an expert in combining the mental trainings of learning the Bible with the physical trainings of making your muscles bigger. Perfect. So I'll tell the story, and Horvath, you give us some exercises to help us remember it. All right, let's do this. Okay, so Jesus was talking to a crowd of people from the side of a mountain. One of the things he said to his followers was this, you are the salt of the earth. Ah, first exercise. Okay, we are going to make salt for the earth. All right, so I put my hands on my hips like this and then rotate around. Click, 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 click. This is called the salt grinder. We do it 24 times. Ready? Go, one. Click, click, click. 14, click, click, click. Elastic girl, click, click, click. Three hole punch, click, click, click. 24, hey, we made salt of the earth. <laughs> okay, that was fun. Yeah. But what do you think Jesus was talking about when he said you are the salt of the earth? Yeah, so when Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth, I'm pretty sure he wasn't saying we actually taste like salt. But salt is used to make food taste better, and salt is used to keep certain foods fresh. So maybe if we're the salt of the earth, Jesus was saying that we have the opportunity to make the world better somehow. You see? <laughs> okay. Um... Jesus kept going. He said, you are the light of the world. Ah, second exercise. We are not salt anymore. Click, 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 click. We are lights. So let us pretend to be lighthouses. Stand straight and rotate your head like a light all the way around. I call this, turn the light on. We do it 137 times. Go, one. 26, grape nuts, Willie Shoemaker, 137, oh, what's next, Kellens? Right, so first Jesus called people who followed him salt, and then he said we were light. Well, what do you think that means? Oh, no, don't, 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 don't do that again. No, no, no. Here, uh, maybe this will help. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. People don't light a lamp and put it under a bowl, right? Right. Right. Instead, they put it on its stand. Then it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine so others can see it. Then they'll see the good things you do, and they'll bring glory to your Father who is in heaven. I think I understand. You do? No. Ah, that's okay. It can be confusing sometimes. Jesus was saying that if you are someone who trusts and follows him, you should live in such a way that brings light into what can sometimes be a dark world. You should be looking for creative ways to do things and creative ways to love others. And when we do that, it will point others to God. All right. Let's do this. Seventh exercise. I call this one ladders to heaven so we can point people to God's. Okay, so we raise our hands and legs is at the same times, just like we are climbing the ladders to heaven. And then when we reach the top, we point like this. Huh? Okay, we climb 45 of the ladder rungs. Go. One, 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 six, 45. Now point to God because he is the most important. Ah, ah, I think I need to take the elevator. Ah. Good idea. Bye, Horvath. Ah. Going down. Ah. 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 
Well, just in case that wasn't clear, it boils down to this. You have the light inside of you, and it's up to you to decide how to use it. You can keep it to yourself, or you can let it shine. Back to you guys. Thanks, Kellen. Hey, what are some ways we can shine our lights? Oh, there are so many different ways because everyone is so different. Sometimes it's as simple as being nice to someone. Anyone can do that. But sometimes you need to use your own unique talents and abilities to point people to God. What's important is that you don't keep it to yourself. I mean, do you ever think about how you'd feel if someone didn't point you to God? I'd feel so left out. Yeah. Jesus has been such a big part of my life. I want everyone to know him. Exactly. You're the best, Kellen. Thanks for shining your light. You bet. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Let's do it. All right. Reveal the question. Who first told you about God's story? What a great question, because those were people who shone their light to us. For, for me, it was a, a, a guy named Brett in my senior class at high school. Oh, cool. For me, it was my, my grandmother. Oh, mm -hmm. cool. For me, it was my mom when she took me to Sunday school for the first time. Awesome. Are the fries ready yet? Oh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, yum. Yum, too. Also yum. Oh, these are amazing. Yeah, good. We gotta tell people about this. I think you're right. I think we should. No, now! We need to tell people right now. Hey, everybody, you gotta try this. Okay, we'll see you guys next week for another so-and-so show. Oh, it's all good. Try it right now. Right now! John. John! I'm ready to get ready. I'll be running. You do the spin. All of them. <laughs>